I see this movement within the church as a chance to be able to uh, to really be the new life of our church. Um, I think that uh, the refugees bring with them a whole new uh, sense of uh, spirituality. Uh, I see them as people who have suffered way beyond anything that we have ever suffered, and uh, I see them with a deep, deep sense of faith and commitment that uh, we ha- we do not seem to have in the society we live in today, presently. And uh, I see them as being leaders in the future within our parishes, within the church, within the broader Canadian church. And I certainly think that they definitely will be the new life and the leaders in the church in the new millennium. The welcoming of strangers has become a matter of faith for many Canadians. It has also been a process of mutual enrichment and change for the newcomers and also for those who help them. Both sides, as they learn to live and to walk together, come to see in a new way the real meaning behind the sacred teachings of their faiths. One of the things we have in Latin America is a very deep religious experience. People have a very deep sense about God, about His love, about the suffering of Jesus for us, and about the presence of God in everything and everywhere. When the Hispanic people came, I was already into liberation theology, uh, but it was a whole new way of working at liberation theology with them right in our midst. For me, it convinced me that there is a Holy Spirit, there is a God who uh, changes us even when we're not ready for change and brings some things into our midst that cause us to grow. I have learned a lot in this country how, how to solve problems, compromising the moral values of the Canadian society, the whole history of, uh, of uh, how they have helped people in different ways, overseas, whatever, the open door for that, for some kind of sectors, refugees, this kind of stuff. And I also bring my philosophy and that click, you know, that match. And now I am a new Canadian and I, and I believe that my My eight years here in Canada make me a different person as well. I live in a parish that has been reinvented in the last 20 years by its many, many, many immigrant members. Particularly, it's been reinvented by the Filipinos who have a gift of urban sociability and of a gracious welcome that's... um, much greater than the average Canadian gift. For me, this has been partly a pleasure to watch and partly a big challenge because they don't think about the faith the way I grew up thinking about the faith. We debated a lot about theology and Catholicism and public policy and things like that. And most of the people in my parish don't do that. Uh, they are much closer to the heart in things of faith. There's a, a very moving uh, occasion that, that I recall when uh, a group of uh, people that on behalf of whom we had been working were, were finally granted minister's certificates so that they could stay in the country. And one of them who as a, a Muslim, came over and uh, he said, you know, it just staggers me that, uh, that you and others with you have gone to bat for us, people that, that um, you have never known. You, we don't supposedly share the same religious tradition, but uh, you've put your lives on the line for us. And uh, he said, this, is, this has changed me. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. All over the country, small groups of the faithful have come together to support the newcomers in their midst. In the process, they have found their own spiritual lives enriched and fundamentally changed. I'll ask you to reflect now and speak about the uh, 
meaning that the work with your refugees has had for your understanding of the gospel experience and especially the meaning of your faith journey. Maybe Rod? I feel like I've gone back to the what the first century for Christians must have been like. And then after getting together with this group and uh, finally realizing that you can look and find Christ in every person you meet, it was very, very easy to work with the refugees. I lived in such a comfortable world and I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the world. They've lost so much and then they come here with nothing. And they're so grateful for whatever you do. When I think about the 12 years we've been praying together, it's been a fundamental alteration and, and a growing. As a, as a lawyer, I've learned some of this, some really horrendous stories of, of torture and, and horrible troubles, but I've been impressed with their courage and their love and their simple faith. I mean, what they've done. As we got into it, it seemed that the more we put out a uh, helping hand, we were getting back tenfold because here were people who were teaching us a lot in, in terms of uh, what it is to uh, not have anything. And these people come here with absolutely nothing, the clothes on their back and all these, these stories that are in some cases horrific. As you got to know them better, uh, they uh, in turn sort of give whatever they had to give their friendship, and that's probably the biggest thing, it was their friendship.